a wonderful person, this is Anton, and there's someone really important talking right behind me. But who exactly is this? And why is he so important? I actually wonder how many of you will know exactly who this is. And as you might have guessed from the title or from the thumbnail, this person right here is the father of the Big Bang Theory. This is Georges Lemaitre, the Belgian cosmologist that also just happens to be a Catholic priest, who was the first to figure out that the universe is expanding and was also the first to figure out that it all started from a really, really small, dense point. But before I talk a little bit more about the history and the importance of all of this, I wanted to briefly mention why I'm showing you this video. This video was only rediscovered in 2022. As a matter of fact, this is the only video we have of Le Maître on camera and the only time he was ever interviewed and asked a lot of questions about his theories and about his explanations. And this Belgian broadcasting company has only recently recovered the video footage completely by accident. Turns out that his name was misspelled and the film turned out to be misclassified with a lot of other older footage and would have been lost to time if it wasn't for a recent search by some of the new staff members that suddenly recognized him while watching some of this older film. But what makes all of this super intriguing is that back then in 1964, when all of this originally filmed, Le Maître was not particularly famous or was not particularly known. As a matter of fact, the Big Bang Theory was barely accepted by anyone. And it's only a year after this was filmed, in 1965, that the scientists finally saw the evidence of the original prediction from his theory, the cosmic microwave background radiation, CMB, an undeniable evidence for his idea and the definitive proof that he was completely right. But let's actually discuss some of the other details and some of the other history to make all of this a little bit more clear. So, as I mentioned in the beginning, in the early and mid-1900s, the most prominent theory and the most prominent explanation when it came to the universe was known as the steady state model, proposed in 1948 by Fred Hoyle, Thomas Gold, and Herman Bondi. But it had a lot of issues, including the fact that it was impossible to explain why the universe consisted of relatively similar density everywhere, with a lot of observations, such as, for example, the ratio of hydrogen and deuterium being completely unexplained by this particular idea. But it basically proposed that the universe was always the same and has never really changed much. But if the universe did not expand, and if it was always permanent size, by looking back in time, we should also be seeing a huge amount of galaxies. Here's actually a visual comparison to what we should be observing when looking into the ancient universe with telescopes like the James Webb or the Hubble. But in reality, we actually see something like this. And so this model, known as the Tired Light Model, does not seem to actually explain the observations from various telescopes. Instead of the expanding universe causing the redshift of distant galaxies, for some reason distant galaxies experience the light that over time lost its energy for some unknown reason or potentially due to some particle, eventually becoming known as the Tired Light Hypothesis. And by the way, the first person to ever measure redshift in galaxies, before we even knew they were galaxies, was Vesto Slipher. He did this back in 1912. But it was of course the American Edwin Hubble that then found a connection between distance the redshift and the variety of nebula, which in reality were actually galaxies, eventually leading to something we now refer to as the Hubble's Law. And so by looking at various redshifted galaxies, it was Edwin Hubble who officially discovered the universe. There is an older video about this in the description below. But not so long afterwards, another person, Georges Lemaitre, a Belgian physicist and a Roman Catholic priest, started to realize that there was actually a connection here. The recession of nebula, or the recession of these galaxies, was probably due to the expansion of the universe itself. And then there's this iconic picture with Einstein and Robert Millikan, another physicist from America. This picture is iconic for one simple reason. Around this time, Lemaitre proposed his ideas, including very thorough calculations, to Einstein himself. Einstein laughed. He even called his math preposterous. Obviously, he was quite a character. Yet Einstein was completely wrong. And Lemaitre was right. He was one of the first to prove Einstein wrong and to discover something completely new. And obviously because he was also a Catholic priest, it did not sit well with everybody. But his math and his proposition were definitely correct. He realized that if projecting back in time, it looked like the universe seemed to have formed from some kind of a primeval atom or primordial egg. Basically a single point. And it actually took years before any of this started to be accepted by anyone else. As a matter of fact, following this proposition, there were approximately 15 years of very, very heated discussions and debates. But eventually, even Einstein was convinced, 
and a 1927 paper written by Le Maître eventually convinced most astronomers. But not Fred Hoyle, the biggest proponent for the steady-state hypothesis, who as a joke referred to the other idea as the Big Bang. He basically mocked it. But eventually that term stuck, and so now we know this as the Big Bang Theory. But one of the most important predictions in the Big Bang Theory was that initially there was a very large explosion that very likely produced huge amounts of energy that should be visible even today, potentially visible as some kind of a radio radiation or microwave radiation. And when in 1965 the microwave background radiation was discovered, this definitively confirmed all of the ideas. It essentially suggested that the universe did not always exist, it must have had some kind of a beginning. And this beginning very likely occurred approximately 14 billion years ago, according to Le Maître. But intriguingly, it was really probably his Catholic upbringing that made him come up with this unusual theory. The idea of beginning, the idea of sudden explosion, with all of this appearing out of a very small point, pretty much all at once, does have a bit of a religious undertone. Which is maybe why a lot of scientists did not accept it at first. But now there is just too much evidence to say otherwise. And this interview that was recently released and unfortunately is only in French right now, although if time allows I'll probably try to translate this to English, so do subscribe if you don't want to miss that video, essentially shows us what Le Maître was like and also clarifies a few things we're always wondering about. For example, in the beginning he simply talks about the experimental evidence, specifically from various measurements around the universe, that do suggest the expansion of the universe itself. Remember, this is a year before the cosmic microwave background was discovered. But later on he also starts to talk a little bit more about philosophy and religion, and when the interviewer asks him about the religious significance of his proposition, Le Maître responds brilliantly, I am not defending the primeval atom for the sakes of whatever religious motive would upset religious people. The beginning is so unimaginable, so different from the present state of the world that such a question does not arise. Even if God does theoretically exist, he says he doesn't believe a deity's existence would interfere with the scientific nature of astronomical theory. If God supports the galaxies, he acts as God. He does not act as a force that would contradict everything. It's not Voltaire's watchmaker who has to wind the clock from time to time. In other words, he basically says that in this case there is absolutely no reason to believe that anything in the Bible or in any other religion contradicts his observations and his theories. God and the Big Bang theory are sort of separate. He doesn't think the science demands a religious explanation of any of this, and he doesn't think that the religion finds anything wrong with the Big Bang theory, although he was clearly not particularly interested in discussing this. He also talks about his fierce proponent Fred Hoyle, and more importantly, at some point brings up the potential cosmic rays that we should be detecting that he refers to as the rays of the primeval fireworks stating that by discovering them his theory would be proved completely, which was done a year after. Although unfortunately he died shortly after learning about the discovery of these cosmic waves, which I guess means that he probably died satisfied, and knew that he was correct. And so in this 20 minute long interview he basically discusses all of the main points and all of the main ideas as seen from the cosmologists of 1960s. And overall this is a brilliant interview, of possibly one of the most brilliant men that's not as well known as Einstein, who proposed something that even today we still kind of have trouble understanding. This man was of course a bit of an enigma, I mean he was a catholic priest by training, but was also ridiculously intelligent, and is only one of the few people in the world who was able to prove Einstein wrong. But because of the importance of this interview, and because it's unfortunately only in French, a group of scientists recently translated everything to English and published as a paper available to everyone. And hopefully in the near future, I'll be able to put up the translation on the channel in order to make this interview available in English for everyone to watch. Because that's basically one of the most important interviews when it comes to cosmology, and in this case Georges Lemaitre, just like Einstein, deserves to become a household name. And hopefully the people who discovered this footage find some more, because this is definitely one of the most important parts of scientific history. But at least for now that's all I wanted to mention. Check out some of the previous videos on this topic in the description below, watch out for that video of the translation of this, and I'll see you tomorrow, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.